Okay, one moment. Just turning on on Twitch too. Okay, great. I hope everyone can hear me. I'll get started straight away. I'm doing this by um, request that I continue with these tool set tuition for Neverwinter Nights. Basically this is starting again from the very beginning um, in a series of short videos starting with the Extreme Basics. This is streaming both on the Aerolith Discord and on Twitch. In Twitch I'll stop and start to divide it in between two videos. On uh, the Discord I will just continually stream. And yeah, this is this is basically the absolute basics of making a module on Neverwinter Night. So first off, when you start the game, you get prompted to open the tool set, go into the DM client, or um, play the game. Obviously, in this case, we're going to want to be going into the tool set, which will bring up this screen. Now, you can either create a new module or open an existing one. If you create a new one it leads you to the module creation wizard where you can name your module so um, I just call it my module. I'm not actually going to finish setting this one up and explain why in a second um, and it will just and then you create your area okay so I just click cancel cancel creation of the module because I'm going to advise that you don't actually create your own module but rather go on to the Neverwinter Nights vault. Now a lot of modules currently for Neverwinter Nights use um, custom content, downloadable hacks. Now don't get confused between the Steam Workshop which will update things on your side, the player side, and the Neverwinter Night vault here where you can actually install the mods that will you know change your game it's not just for mods there's a whole bunch of resources on here and the one i'm wanting to concentrate on here the one i will always be working on is the giga shatten's persistent world engine version 4 aerolith edition this enables you to create a server basically with the same core functionality of aerolith that means the spawn system the crafting system it doesn't require any hacks whatsoever it doesn't require any scripting knowledge there's a lot of basic tools in there for basically creating a module you can get up and running from the very start so i'm going to be working with that because it's a um, it's a much easier way to to begin developing with Neverwinter Nights and it means that you can create your own module and have it playable straight away whether that is for creating a persistent world or whether it's just for creating an online Dungeons and Dragons environment you can use with a pen and paper campaign because of course in Neverwinter Nights the DM can always be present either appearing and talking to the characters or controlling the creatures spawning the creatures and so forth. The Persistent World engine will basically, you'll click download here, scroll down, wherever it is, here, you just download that, put it in your module folder and then you can open it. So it creates, the, it's got the core module in it but it's also got a lot of tools that you can use in the DM client for spawning creatures, changing the lightings, creating you know vfx so maybe you want it to rain fire or the sky to darken or whatever you might need when running a um what is effectively an online pen and paper campaign or dming within the world itself but we're sticking with the very basics today so i'm um, going to go back to the tool set here and if i can find it here we are and we're just looking at create in a or open in this case opening a module so I go to open it will bring up 
this you'll see I've got a lot of modules here some of these are the core Neverwinter Nights ones other ones are part of the Aralith development modules that I use and there's also Tyrants of the Moon Sea here which I worked on professionally as the lead area designer so I've got the development version of that on there which is something pretty interesting to look at it was a lot of fun working on efficient Forgotten Realms content but anyway I'm going to open the Gigashatten. Now the reason I'm saying work with this even though it's outdated is you're not going to have to tackle any confusing scripts. You're not going to need to create a database or set up a Neverwinter Night Sync for players to download whatever custom content you're using. This is effectively just plug and play. You can just go in and start working with it straight away. So right away here we are in to the module. There are three menus. The areas, this is where you'll create your areas. Conversations, these are just the conversations that people can have with either with NPCs or with game system and the scripts. So you can see the Neverwinter Night, the Aralith engine contains a bunch of scripts that help you with crafting and everything to begin with. So if you're creating your own module you'll have these same things but conversation areas and scripts they will all be empty here uh, we just have areas that deal with core functionality death is where you will go when you die if your character dies let's just have a quick look at that uh, you can customize this however you want but basically there's a grim reaper he tells you how many experience points you will lose to respawn click in the middle there and you will respawn wherever your respawn point is. Then you have the uh, loading area. This is where you basically, your character should only be in here for a second as they load into the module. Um, which you can then, you'll be, this here is the start marker. You can see along the top here, it's a long time since I did that, go to start location and you can place the start location by the same symbol over here. So paint start location. Wherever you want people to start in your module, you just put the start location in, that's where they'll appear. The other ones here are the dungeon master area. Howard still uses basically the same area as this. Uh, the Dungeon Master area is a place where the DMs will load into. There's a button here for resetting your server. There's a little cage you can interact with to ban players if they've been misbehaving. Um, yeah, and then we have the inventory area. I'll go into these areas at greater length in a later video. This is a pretty cool system. Basically, you fill the chests with whatever you want thick creatures to drop so for instance this one here is outsider so if there's like a planar creature and it dies it will drop something ran some random things from this box all the treasure containers whether it's treasure weapons armor the master loot is all handled from these containers um, and then the trade area um, is used for creating a crafting system so you can do it all in game you don't need to do anything with these areas if you're building with the Gigashatten module. These are all done in-game. You can set up your loot tables in-game. You can build your crafting recipes that are available to players in-game. The only reason you need to go into the tool set is to make the areas. But anyway, whether you are using the Aralith module or you're creating your own module, one of the first places you're going to want to go is to module properties. Now this can be seen here in Ed. I'll do that a bit slower. Apologies for rushing. Um, area properties, which will be this specific area, in which case trade module properties covers the whole um, module. So let's have a look what we've got here. This is the name of the module. I can change this to whatever I want my world to be called. The tag really doesn't matter. Starting area just tells you where the start location is. Now, events is a lot more complicated. And this is why I'm using the Gigashatten engine, because we would be 
just spending an excessive amount of time discussing scripts. Here it's all done. Let's have a quick look down the list. On acquire item, on activate item, on client enter, that's when the player enters, on client leave, when the player leaves, on heartbeat, on module load, on player death, on player dying, on player equip item, on player level up, on respawn, on rest. A couple of blank ones there. On equip item and on acquire item. You can just edit these according to however you want to customize your module. You don't have to edit them at all, um, but they're all in. So don't worry about that. If you're creating a new module, these will all be blank. So if you've got no scripting knowledge and you're wanting to work with the Aurora tile set to create a module, then you need to expect to do everything as a DM via the set tools within the game. Now that's really good as a pen and paper resource. It's not going to work for a persistent world or creating anything playable. Um, without you're going to need basically unless you're using an engine like the Aerith engine you're going to need a lot of scripting knowledge uh, advanced so this is self-explanatory um, minutes in an hour six minutes um, that's six minutes real time to uh, an hour in game time we have this wildly different on Aerith now we have it running at basically a third of real time and then you can see what time dawn start, what time dusk starts, what the starting month, starting day, starting year is. Description of the module. This will appear to anyone that sees your module in the online list. At least I think so. I've never actually filled that in. And then custom content. Now, this is pretty key. Um, you're probably going to want to use hacks eventually because they really can improve the game a great deal now what you can do is just say to your players you know go to the workshop use what overrides you like i'm not going to build with any but understand then that players will see things differently depending upon what overrides they are using now if you are going to be using hacks which you're probably going to want to you're either going to have to set up what is called neverwinter night sync this is an automatic downloader that will download all of the hacks required by players as they join your game or they're going to basically need to know in advance what they are and make sure they put them in their hack folder the neverwinter nights folder it's in different place on different people's desktop there you will see the hack folder all the hacks will be inside i'm not going to navigate all of my f actually you know what i think i can i will find the folder just a bit careful with uh, privacy because i'm having to um stream an entire screen because Discord doesn't like Neverwinter Nights. It tends to crash. Um, so let me just close that. Let's move this over. Okay. Here's my Neverwinter Nights folder. Here is the hack folder. So this is where your hacks will go. In my case, it's Documents Neverwinter Nights Hack. Okay, um, drop down menu, find the hack you want to use. Now, I'm clicking on Bio City Interior here and adding it. A complex module will have a whole bunch of hacks. The more you work with, expect bugs. There will be problems. Not a lot of hacks might crash the tool set, they might cause problems for players. Honestly, if you're a beginner, I would only recommend very few, and I've prepared them for you here. So let's go back to the Neverwinter Nights Vault. Now, these Neverwinter Nights facelift hacks have all been completed by Zverkules. I worked with Zverkules on creation of Tyrants of the Moon Sea, and some of this work since this has been since this is here, it's actually been in the main game. So if you've bought Neverwinter Nights for a PC, the, your new medieval city is uh, is there. It's, it's part of the game. You don't need to download it. But not all of his work was downloaded into the main game because some of it uses ripped textures, which obviously couldn't be used commercially. Now, there's a list here of what he's got here. The interior tile set, which is the one I've just been adding there, BioCity. It makes the city interior much, much better and I advise anyone uses it. Cave tile set is also really good. Um, probably worth putting in. There is a problem with the mini map, so I'm not going to be using that in any of the tuition. Forest tile set you don't need. It's in the main game. Rural tile set. 
Uh, I don't believe is in the main game, so you can add that one if you want to. Snow tile set. This is actually the uh, winter rural. It's in the main game now, so you don't need to uh, use it. There's also a new, entirely new snow tile set of his, which is in the main game. And the city tile set, which is really also uh, essential, I would say, if you're creating a module. I'm not going to be using it in these um, videos, but it basically makes the Neverwinter Night City tile set, the original, much, much better. I mean, really incredibly pretty. So the two I would strongly recommend are City Tile Set and Interior Tile Set. You find them in the list here. Uh, interior Tile Set there and City Tile Set here. You just click on them, they'll download, put them in your hack folder and add them in the um, module. So let's, uh, let's find my mouse cursor. Go back to the tile tool tile set. So once I've added this and I click OK, it will just rebuild the module. It gives you a little warning saying you're about to change the hack uh, files used. It might crash, blah, blah, blah. And then it will just quickly reload, close the areas, reload everything, make sure everything is in for it, it's in there that's needed, and then just rebuild the module. This won't take very long because there are not many scripts in the core Aralith module. If you're working with a really big module, changing the hacks could, could take a long time. Um, so basically that's it. That's, that's how to create your module. We're going to go through all the different menus one by one through the course of these videos, uh, starting off with tile sets, um, which, is gonna, which we're going to do in a few minutes. On Twitch, I will be stopping and restarting. Uh, in the meantime, I'm just going to answer any questions, read any comments that have come in. I can see that um, uh, the previous admin of Aerith is watching on um, Twitch. He's reminded me that the order of the hacks that you put in is important as well, especially if something has assets contained in both, but you want the certain one to show. They can have varying textures, etc. Yeah, the more hacks you have, getting them in the right order is absolutely important. Um, to be honest, thankfully, I'm lucky to have people on my staff that do this. So, okay, here is all the things it's telling that is missing. So... These creatures are missing resources. That means there are items in the custom palette of the creatures that don't exist. Um, voice EXE, a script. Two scripts here I haven't compiled. In fact, quite a few haven't compiled. That's obviously concerning. I'm guessing it's because the Neverwinter Nights... Um, I'm guessing it's because the engine here is out of date, but... Um, not familiar with what these scripts are, but there's a lot of compile error on the scripts. Maybe because the Aralith engine online is out of date. I'm honestly not sure. I won't go through compile errors on the scripts, but anyway, the hack will be added. If you do have um, errors like that, it may prevent the module loading, may prevent people going in. We can always test it. More likely the scripts will just misfire. I expect it's fine. Uh, but this hack should now be should now be in. Um, let me just keep check Discord. If you've got any comments you can or questions, you can ask me there. So no comments or questions so far. So I've created your module, areas, conversation, scripts, and the module properties which we've just been through. Whether using the Aralith module or creating a new one, this is as far as you'll get. When you're using the Gigashatten engine, keep in mind that he was, is, I um, haven't spoken to him for well over a decade, um, German. So some of the comments will be written in German. It can be a bit hard to navigate it. Um, I need to ask one of our staff members to just have a look over this engine again and see why some things aren't compiling there. That does seem to be a bit of an issue, but you know I've tested this in the past and it, and it has worked, so we'll, we'll check that a bit further on. Um, but okay, any questions about creating a module or the module properties? I guess not. 
Okay, so if you're watching on Twitch, uh, just stay on. I'm just going to end this stream and then start directly start a new one with a different title. On Discord, I will be staying online. In the next one of these modules, I'm going to be going through the tile sets one by one. The tile sets that come with Neverwinter Nights, not the hack tile sets. There's lots out there. I'm going to be reviewing them, talking about what's good, what's bad about them, how they can be used, maybe showing a couple of tricks that can be done with some of them, and I'm going to be pointing out existing bugs. Some of the best tile sets have issues that will cause them to crash. It's worth knowing about these in advance before you work with them. Remember the key thing when working with the Neverwinter Nights tools there, it's an old engine, save regularly, make sure you don't lose your work. It's not going to auto save for you, at least not frequently enough, so as soon as you've done a big body of work, hit that save button. So I'm ending the stream on Twitch, I'm starting again in like one minute once I've changed the title. And I will remain on here on Discord.